uh, an activist with the ISM. I have an article which can be found on the website uh, www.homelandsecurityus.com and it's titled The Strange Case of Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith was uh, supposed to be the witness who took photographs of Rachel Corey when she was killed. He was with her minutes before she was killed. And he was in part, partly, he was partly involved with the fraud which revolves mm -hmm. around her death. Um, let's move to the third clip because I think it's very important. This is actually the army footage moments before, uh, right and, up to the point. And it does cut away before she's it actually. Cuts away before she yeah, was killed. So now, you th won't this is not, see this the, is not the army footage. This is actually a, a shot of the tractor. But in a second, there we go. Okay, this is the actual army. This footage. This is the army actually photographed it. Now it's hard to see her there, but you, you know, you said she's kneeling. She's just she's just behind that mound of debris there, and the tractor coming out right up to her before she was killed. And if you have a chance to look at the film more slowly, mm -hmm. you will see that the visibility from the tractor is almost nil, and there is no house behind her. Mm -hmm. um, there was the house somewhat in the vicinity, and that's the house that wasn't destroyed until months and months and months later anyway. Well, see, the, and the, after the Nasrallah family had moved out. The, uh, the entire story about her protecting a house was fabricated, and they actually took Photoshop, and they took pictures of a house, and they superimposed the tractor in the foreground. And if people will look at that picture, they can go to, uh, there's a website called Omdurman dot org, O-M-D-U-R-M-A-N, and they have uh, the pictures blown up in large scale. And if you look at them, you'll see the shadows don't match, feet are missing off of people, mm -hmm. and those pictures were doctored by Joseph Smith also, because he took credit for those pictures. And Joseph Smith, when he was interviewed by a Seattle newspaper reporter and asked about Rachel Corey's death, actually said he thought the death of Rachel Corey was well worth the cost of it if it furthered the revolution. So, you know, these are the facts behind this woman's dying. Yeah, I think people should be considered that when Rachel Corey went under the ISM and that the first thing she did was retrieve a dead body. The second thing she did was go and protect these wells where they were, had, people were getting shot at. And then the last thing she did, which took her life, was playing, you know, trying to obstruct huge bulldozers and that, in essence, took her life then, or she died there at age, what, 23, 24 years old. So three extremely dangerous things that the ISM and the Palestinians put her in, it, to me, it sounds like they were trying to kill her. Let me give an illustration of that to you also. If we can look at the fourth clip, what it shows is the army officer, he's a captain, who was involved with the uh, the tractor being there that uh -huh. day. Uh, unfortunately, we can't translate the Hebrew, but what he's basically saying mm -hmm. is that they were such a bunch of nut jobs that day that they were deliberately running in front of the tractors and the tanks and playing chicken with them. And uh, if you hang on just about now, he's pointing to his chest. And what he's really saying in Hebrew is what they were doing that day. He said they were standing in front of the tractor and the tanks and saying, shoot me, shoot me. This is what the ISM was doing that day, those peace activists, uh -huh. okay? So, you know, you have, to, you have to take a little adult responsibility in your actions. You're playing chicken with tractors and military equipment in a closed military zone, and this happens. And if you're standing there, say, shoot me, shoot me, it's not excusing somebody getting killed under any mm -hmm. circumstances, but let's face it, you have to take a little responsibility for getting killed in an industrial accident. Uh, basically... Now, the, there was also some uh, conversations by the actual driver of the bulldozer who um, was operating is, the vehicle. His name is Doobie. Yeah, Doobie. Okay, so Doobie was operating it, and he says on the tape, and we can't hear that because it's see that tape. We're going to see that tape in just a moment. Uh -huh. It's actually... It actually uh, shows it right after she was killed. What he but says what on the tape. What I'm saying is that the, the tape says it, it has what he what he the sound inside the cab, and then 
at the time when he hits her and what he says right after that, that's all on the soundtrack of this tape. Is it's, that correct? What it is is the military in uh, a zone like that has these huge poles and they have cameras on top of them. And I guess we can go to the last clip, that's, that's clip number five. And basically what it shows is uh, in the distance, in the uh -huh. distance you'll see, you'll see, you'll see some eyes back this. And then Doobie is saying in Hebrew, Doobie, code, code, and he comes on and he says, I think I hit somebody. Uh -huh. Okay? And they're panning the camera over at this point to get to the area where Rachel Corey was struck by the bulldozer. Uh -huh. In the conversation, Doobie actually says, they're going to him right now. He didn't even know if he'd hit a girl or a man. Right, which leads credibility that he didn't see her before he hit her. Now, this is a second tractor with the lights on there, which came up to the point, was radioed uh -huh. to not to go in the area because something happened. And that's the wreckage from a previous day, right? And that right, wasn't right. And if you look, you'll see to the right, you'll see some of the ISM people who are playing chicken with the tractor run out. Yeah. There they are, and they run into the trench where she is. Okay? So that ground wasn't right. entirely even. Now look at this even. picture, which was provided by Joseph Smith. This is all flat land. You'll notice this? Okay. Now again, notice that they're inside a trench. That was a weapons tunnel that she was trying to block the tractor from closing. Okay, and here's a picture of her right after she was killed. Look at the mound of dirt behind her, okay? She was still alive. In the picture before so that you we think showed she you, was at a lower elevation, which would make she it was even in, harder for the driver to see She was in a her. trench, and it was the entrance to a weapon smuggling tunnel. And the army was closing the tunnel, and she stood in front of the tunnel as a chicken, you know, playing chicken with the mm -hmm. tractor, and she was killed. And she wasn't killed mm -hmm. deliberately. They didn't see her. And the fact is... You can see how they doctored the pictures because the first photograph, which is supposedly, this was on the Palestine Solidarity Org website, mm -hmm. shows her on flat ground with these people around her. Then when you see the real picture, which shows her moments after she was struck, there's a huge wall of dirt behind her, and she's propped up on that wall of dirt. That's because she was in a trench when she was killed. And, mm -hmm. you know, this, is, this whole thing about the Israelis murdered her, and she's a martyr, mm -hmm. and she's you know a terrible victim of Israel, and all this stuff. This is all propaganda. This is all mm -hmm. lies, and this is all fabrication. Well, I, I have some um, quotes from some of the eyewitnesses. Alex Cox claimed she was an eyewitness. Um, she said that Rachel Corey, her head was above the blade of the, tra and these were huge. The 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 blade on the tractor is eight feet four inches high. Mm -hmm. And Rachel is, what, 5'4 or something? Look, and she and was standing up and she wasn't standing any, up. Anybody who saw... It wasn't the, on flat ground even. Anybody who saw the footage and saw the tractor coming from the left side of the screen and heading directly toward her can see that she was too low down for the driver to see and that the mm -hmm. blade was too high up for the driver to see her. Okay, and Joseph Smith said... She sat down 15 meters in front of the bulldozer and began waving her hands and shouting. Well, again, we saw the video, and she's not waving her hands and shouting. She's just stand, she's standing, or as you say, you think she's kneeling. I think, yeah, I thought I could see her kneeling. And basically, she's just standing there playing chicken with the tractor, and she wasn't waving her hands. Now, what's interesting also is I know Joseph Smith claimed that they were waving their hands and trying to stop Some the tractor. Some of the eyewitnesses said she had a megaphone, too, right. as well. You, well. You, saw, well, you saw in the second clip no megaphone, and you saw in the second clip there were no people around that tractor waving at it to stop before mm -hmm. it reached her. Mm -hmm. In fact, they, they uh, were over in the debris before and they ran out into the trench after she was struck. Okay, so, you know, this is, these are complete lies. They're complete uh -huh. fabrications. Well, here's what Joseph Smith says. When it got so close, it was moving the earth underneath her. She climbed up onto the pile of rubble being pushed by the bulldozer. She got so high on it, she was eye level with the cab of the bulldozer. And again... Uh, now, the, any, cab is, the cab is like 10 feet six inches above the ground. Listen, if, you know, the films don't lie. You saw the interior of the tractor, and you saw the visibility. You saw how high up they are. You see the blade. You saw the footage, which already contradicts what the ISM and, has been and saying. And the ISM had been there for three hours that yeah. day, uh, numerous times going in front.